In a few simple steps, you're gonna be able to create this fake 3D bevel on any type with this chrome look. And if you stay to the end, I'll even show you how to create some semi-realistic reflections. So stick around for that. Sip of iced coffee before we start. Mm. Good stuff. So in this case, I've used this font Amador to write this ASAP Softy, which is from my Dimensions title pack. Let's type whatever we want to write. So let's change the paragraph to centered and align it to the center. Uh, I changed the uh, S in ASAP to a dollar sign. Uh, I didn't use Rocky, I said Softy anyway. So what we're actually using is layer styles, which is something that I would often use in Photoshop, but I didn't realize that you could use in um, After Effects. So it's not real 3D, but it looks pretty darn close. So you can't rotate your camera around it and that kind of thing, but usually I don't need to. So we're gonna select our text layer, we're gonna go to layers, and then we are going to select layer styles. And you can start with show all, and that'll just bring all of of the layer styles in a stack, but I am just gonna start with bevel and emboss. We're gonna customize this a whole lot. So let's scroll down bevel and emboss. Let's change this from smooth to chisel hard. Uh, there's some, chisel soft has some cool things as well, but you can check that out on your own. To start to up this size, and you can see that, you know, the lower size, it would just have it on the, the bevel on the edges, which could be a cool look. But what we wanna do is we wanna change the size until it meets in the middle. Um, so you can see now that all of these lines have kind of met in the middle. So as you can see, it took me a couple seconds and we're already almost all the way there. Depending on the size of the font, that'll be a different number. I like to soften this to maybe one because the it just looks a little bit digital. You might not be able to see it in HD, but it looks a little bit digital, those lines there. So I'm just gonna soften that to one. We are going to change the depth and that is gonna kind of change the contrast um, depending on how much kind of light and dark you want. 200 or something like that's fine. So if you have global light set to off, you can change the angle of the light. So you can even kind of rotate it around. You can animate it to rotate, that's pretty cool. And then the altitude again is kind of another way to get a form of contrast, but this is how high up that light is. 120 for uh, angle and 30 for altitude, that's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna change the highlight mode to normal and normal. For this example, there's a lot of other things that you can do in terms of glows and other layer styles that can really aid this, but we're just gonna get there as quick as we can for this one. So we're gonna go 100% and 100% on the shadow opacity and the highlight opacity. I guess the white doesn't really look like Chrome, does it? So what's, you know, Chrome, it's probably like 50% gray-ish. And maybe if you wanted, you could even put like a little bit of a cooler tone in there. Um, just to give it something extra and pretty much that's already looking very chrome and very cool and then we can add some details. So let's create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this look or effects or something like that, whatever you feel like. Um, we are going to want to use a glow of some sort. There's three ways that I use to make a glow. Sometimes I'll double up uh, multiple layers of the same thing using blurs. Sometimes I'll use After Effects' native glow, which is pretty sucky. And sometimes I'll use a plugin called Deep Glow, which is amazing and you should check it out. But let's assume you don't have Deep Glow. So let's just use Glow. It looks pretty terrible so far. So let's expand that radius. Uh, what we're going for here is just trying to add a little bit of realism. So I only really want those highlights to pop out. And since so much of it is highlights, we need to probably go up to 90, 80, something like that. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So maybe like 95 is too high. Where's that highlight starting to pop in there? So like 87, and then suddenly like 85, it goes berserk. So maybe like 87, couldn't decide. So that's the radius, the intensity you can bring up or down depending, so maybe we can bring it down and then bring the threshold down as well. So this is just kind of what I do to get a little bit of that glow. I feel like it still looks quite digital. So one thing that I like to do sometimes, which sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but I like to blur it and then sharpen it. Um, so let's go with a, a Gaussian blur. I believe that's how you pronounce it. That's the whole debate, isn't it? Gaussian, Gaussian. 
Gaussian blur. And then there's quite a few different ways you can sharpen something. I'm going to use unsharp mask in this uh, instance. And remember that stacking in After Effects is really important. What layers stacked first? Let's push the amount um, there. I'm just going to switch off this for now. So I'm going to sharpen that a whole lot to maybe like 200. It's looking, say so now the problem I'm running into, I'm getting these kind of weird lines pop out quite a little bit too much. So maybe I'll go to 150 and then back this blurriness off to like 1.5. These are small details, not the most necessary thing in the world to sell this look, but I like to go that extra mile. So if that's 150, that's two. See, that's, I mean, it's a little bit out of focus, but it's also just a little bit more, a little bit less digital. Put the glow back on. That's helping it a little bit. Let's actually put a black solid in the background in this case, because right now this is on a transparency. And as you can see with glows, that can cause a bit of a drop shadow look. That's why it's the main reason why I don't use After Effects native glow actually. And there's a few reasons. Um, if I show you what deep glow would do, obviously out of the box, it's not perfect. Let's go threshold, maybe 80. Let's bring the radius down to maybe 300. Exposure down to like, I don't know, 0 0.5. That's all, I mean, that's already like, cause you can see in the highlights how it's really popping off. It looks so much better. You can use noise or um, preferably you would use a real a grain texture. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna use noise three. I'm not using color noise, so that helps a little bit as well. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. And like I said, you can, go in and maybe um, animate the angle. So say I was to make this kind of a six second, you know, loop or something. <sighs> a little bit of iced coffee while we wait for a render. And the, th the thing to remember with Deep Glow is as I'm recording this, Deep Glow is not optimized for multi-frame rendering yet. So it will be a little bit slower to render than some of your other plugins. But even just look how cool that kind of little glinty look is it will do some quite sudden moves from gray to white in some spots. So you'll have quite, you, you know, sudden flashes, but that looks so cool. I mean, that's, that's really cool. Let's even uh, go a little bit further. I just feel like, I feel like I want a slightly different, like a little bit of color to it. I don't know. I feel like the black and white just doesn't completely look realistic. So I want a little bit more of a cool tone somewhere. So I'm just gonna take a bit of the red out, maybe bring a bit of the blue into uh, maybe the highlights a bit. Can you tell the difference there between that and that? I mean, it's subtle, but I quite like it. Um, maybe I'll pull some red out, maybe like a little bit more so it's noticeable, but I don't wanna go too far. See how that just looks like I'll turn it off. I'll turn it back on. Just a little bit of color makes it feel a little bit more realistic. So it's not in completely in black and white. It's actually really hot in here. Shouldn't have worn the shirt. Okay, so let's have a look at how to make some semi-realistic reflections. So because this is not a real 3D layer, we can't do an environment layer and create reflections. So what we wanna do is mimic how the reflections would bounce off the bevels, which, you know, are like, uh, on an angle so that you'd have a different reflection here than you would have here. So one way we can do that is to use our luminance values as different way, different reflections as it were. So the light has one reflection and the dark has a different reflection. So let's just change just so it's really obvious. I'm going to change the layer style in here, the angle to be facing kind of 45 degrees. So you can see that there's a light side and a dark side. Why don't we pre-compose this text and we're gonna call this PC. I call all my pre-comps PC, pre-comp anyway. And we're just gonna say, this is text edit. So now we've got text edit down here. Rename our text comp to export. So now we've got text edit and export. And so, I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm just gonna turn off our look layer while we do this. So let's drag our photo in here. 
and I'm going to use a, I'm just going to solo that. That's what that little toggle does, if you didn't know. I'm going to solo that. I'm going to use a tint effect to get rid of any color that I've put in there because there's a little bit of blue in there. I'm going to use a levels adjustment. I don't want this kind of uh, fall off between black, gray and white. I just want to isolate um, everything that is on one side versus the other side. So everything that's gray, I want it to be white. So that's probably this little spike here and everything that's black, I want it to be completely black. So if we have a look there, that's getting pretty close. Let's just go this way a little bit, uh, down like that. So that's like black or white and you can tweak that to your heart's content. Okay, now we're gonna dive into some blending modes. If I just turn that bottom layer off for a minute, we're gonna use this layer as the Luma map for the text layer, this one that you're seeing there. Let's turn off this look. Um, so I'm going to select this track mat over here and go Luma mat. And so that's now all of our whites. And so if I turn this back on, that's the layer underneath it. But what I can actually do is I can make this mat, this layer, um, also make it a multiply. So now you can start to see through it a little bit still. And then I might even want to back off that kind of reflection layer a little bit. Now, something else that sells reflection on Chrome is probably blurs. So I'm gonna use another Gaussian blur on here. And I'm gonna increase that blur um, and starts to look a little bit more like a real reflection. Uh, you can even kind of go in and use a noise here. This is just, I'm just thinking out loud, but I feel like that could be a good way to go. That's so subtle that you guys might not be able to see it, but it looks pretty good on my end. I can pull this back a bit so it's the reflection isn't as obvious, um, but you can mess with that as much as you want the, the, the amount of opacity there. Let's go up a bit to, you know, maybe 80 for now and we'll see how we feel. So now we have something reflecting on the white. So what about we have kind of an opposing reflection for the black? We'll duplicate that whole thing. I want to invert the black and the white. If I just turn that on and solo it, you can see the inversion there. So I'm using the opposite so I don't have to mess with any of that because I'm really just using this as a, as a mat. So now we've got the whole thing. That's kind of cool in itself. And what I can do is I can move this um, layer or I could, uh, I could even rotate it uh, if I wanted to. And you kind of get this different two different sides that are reflecting differently. And that's already pretty cool in my opinion. Um, and then I can, of course, back this off even further, see what happens when we add our look. Eh, that's kind of cool. It's weird. And like, imagine if I used a different photo on this. I mean, let's, let's get like a space photo that I found from Unsplash earlier. I mean, that's pretty cool too, but the, in the blacks, it shouldn't be as bright. So I'm going to probably bring that down to like maybe say 20%. And now we get the difference between highlights back again. Um, and I've got this multiply on the bottom down here. If you wanted, you could even make another version, duplicate it, bring it up the top, you know, pull, pull back the opacity a little bit. That's just a different way to do those reflections. And like, you know, you can mess with the, um, the blur, the blurriness and all that stuff, but that'll really help, especially if you're bringing this text into an environment, like over some footage or something like that. So if I brought this, uh, image in and, uh, fit the comp to width, say that, you know, the, it really helps bring that in. Let's even pre comp this. So call it PC um, text look or text effect, something like that. Um, and that way now in there, the in the export layer, the glow is of the text is not affecting or the color correction is not affecting everything else. So that, that's a lot more integrated. If I just, for example, brought in the text layer, you know, without it, see how that's kind of flat but then this is a little bit better integrated in terms of color and, and glows and that kind of thing. I'd love for you to have a look at the rest of my pack dimensions, which is a 3D title template for After Effects. 
um, and maybe tell me which of the other titles you would like me to do a tutorial on and I'd probably be happy to oblige. Either way, I hope you got something great out of this and just know that you're loved and you're valued and uh, you know, subscribe because I'll be back.